Hello, Search here for the Backyard Driving Range. As you can see, when I was taking that first practice swing, I, I felt like my, right, my sleeves were a little too tight. Uh, I got super long arms, as you've heard me say before, and, and even uh, wearing large sweaters, most of the time they're, they're really in jackets. Many times they're not long, uh, long enough for me in terms of when I finally get to uh, on the way down the impact and my arms really straighten out with the, with the centrifugal force pulling the club down, I have to pull them up a little bit and give myself room, especially with this right arm, which is the one that's really going to be straightening out a little bit longer than the left because of the fact that it's lower on the golf club. So anyways, with that it said, uh, Louis Kiss sent us in a, a, a question and he goes, Hi Surge, going on three years with your swing and playing very well, thank you. You're welcome. I still cannot stop an early release slash cast. I do okay with the in the mitten up the tree and I think my palms are perpendicular at impact position but feel that skipping a rock should get my elbow to delay its release a bit longer. My elbow, okay you didn't say which one. Since you prescribe all of these swing feelings can you do a daily tying the three together? Does that feeling mean that your swing is more right arm powered? If I overdo that skipping rock, my tricep seems to get sore. Thanks, Louie. All right, so by, by what, I'm, what I'm seeing with this is that Louie has given me the impression that, that uh, without a doubt, he's right-handed. And huh, it's ironic, I just talked about my right arm straightening out. Uh, but uh, what really happens, if you skip a rock, rock and say you're right-handed and, 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 and whichever hand you're going to use, and you come down, you just, you just stand and you, and you, and you, and you, as you're coming down, you're starting, your, your hips are starting to drive a little bit forward, your, shoulder, your forward shoulder is going up, your back shoulder is going down, and you're going to be throwing it, you're going to be holding it in your hand, right? And you're going to come over here, you're just going to whoosh like that, and you're going to skip it. All right, look at that. There's a follow-through and everything, okay? Now, naturally, this follow-through doesn't come all the way up because we're throwing it down that way as compared to us trying to hit a ball up in the air where we're going to be throwing it and, and, and releasing a little bit higher, all right? Now, I could have just as easily instead stayed in the air and came up that way and thrown it right over the top of the neck. So the arms are straightening out. Now, again, if you watch a lot of the, a lot of the rotational players these days, they come down, they're so far ahead of the ball, they're coming in, they got the, 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 the arch wrist, Lag, drag, hold, block coming through. I saw, I saw a daily video the other day, or not a daily, but a, some, an instruction video by somebody where they were saying that they had a, they had a little stand over here that held a, a, a thing up here that had like a, one of those uh, kind of rubbery or uh, fungal things that people play. You have in pools over there that like floats, little float things. Had it over here, and he came up. He wanted you to come through, and the club coming uh, with the lag, drag, hold, block have that, that pole here and you come in it that way and he precisely said coming in there's some people that teach you to come in toe up he said that's wrong this is what you want well if I just do that I can feel a pull from right here to from the back of my neck all the way down right to that hip and even down into the leg I mean if that's pulling with me just doing this like that what do you think it's going to get if I'm trying to come through and hit that lag drag hole full hit to there and eventually come up there and then and then, and then I love the part where they go through like this and they all go like they all go like that and, and like the late release is going to stop it from going right. So the thing is is that we are the only folks, we're the only swing that really truly is behind the ball at impact with the arms straighten out. Now the key is, is it seems to me that if you're starting to feel and you just say you, should, you, get, you get a little bit more problems with your elbow, uh, with your tricep in there, so that would be, I would think if you come in here and you're actually trying to over straightened out in the sense that you're doing this and, and putting an arch in to the point where the, where the elbow actually hyperextends, that was at, at, at exactly at the moment of impact is going to be critical. Like I tell folks, a lot of you, you got your elbows, you don't ever want your, 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 your forward elbow, for me the left arm, being too straight at a dress because now that, that's, that's actually under rotated. Watch, here's a normal, I say go down like you're shaking hands, it's like you're going to shake hands at a dress with somebody laying on the ground when they're putting up their hand to shake hands or they're putting up their hand like you see guys on the football field, they knock one of the players is on the ground laying down, his teammate comes by and helps him stand up. He just goes like this. He doesn't go like that and lock his elbow out. He just goes down and he pulls him up. It's you know, palm and palm and, and he pulls up. Same thing here. You're gonna lift that, help lift that player off the ground. You're not gonna lock out. 
All right, as soon as you lock out, you hyperextend it, and it actually flips the, the wrist that way, which is kind of the counter opposite of where it has to go when we go into the toe mitt, in the mitt toe up on the backswing. So the same thing's gonna happen here. If you come in and you, and you let your, and you force your right arm to straighten out too much, it's going to hyperextend again, which will do what? If it hyperextends, it's going to lose that snap going through impact where it happens when we cross our hands, right? We swing back and forth. The hands always flip at six o'clock in the center of the body. You flip this one and you flip down. But if you over hyperextend it, you're actually stopping the rotation and, and that snap is definitely going to stop pulling all the muscles from the, from the wrist up to the elbow and from the elbow up to the shoulder. And that's where you could be getting bicep and tricep issues. Never mind, it could start getting bad enough to get into your neck and, and maybe work its way down into your back. And on top of that, it's going to stop the club from releasing, and I think there's a good probability you're going to be hitting a lot of thin shots, or you could actually you could actually snap it so much, and if you're a little out of timing, hit way behind the ball, or hit the, or hit hit a lot of what we call drop kicks, ground into the ball. All right, so all of those options are not good. All right, so this is a natural movement, just like skipping a rock. If you came in and you hyperextended your arm at impact as you as you were getting down to the bottom and did that same thing, I mean I'm standing right here, I can feel my elbow snapping and hurting, starting to starting to get some uh, extra stress right there you shouldn't be having. You, guess what, you stopped it, you're gonna hit a lot of probably low squirters off to the right. So this is a natural move, toe up to toe up. Just let it go, toe up to toe up like skipping a rock. So you get in here, it's just come back, toe up, and toe over the shoulders. So I think, I think there's a good chance you're, you're overdoing your right arm extending. It should be a natural extension, not a forced one, because if you force it and that arm hypers up like that, boy, you're looking for a bunch of problems everywhere as I said, through the whole arm and maybe uh, and starting the neck to hurt, maybe down the shoulder and down into the upper back. And so it's, you're defying what's natural. It's just a natural skipping of a rock. You've got to feel that snap. And the snap is you're going to feel it from, even when you skip a rock, your thumbs up over here, it's going to be thumbs out over there and it's going to snap it right to there. If you over snap it right there, the, the rock's going to go that way. So it's all this thing, toe up to toe up and up and over the, up, up the tree, shoulder recoil and relax. Okay? So I think you might be overdoing the extensions of the right arm, all right? And, and, and that could be the big problem. And, and, and again, your, your tricep starting to hurt is giving you the message you're overextending and, and overforcing an issue. Just naturally going right through like skipping a rock. All you feel is that little snap right there, and it should be a snap up, not a snap down. Because if you feel that snapping down, which means you're down and then you gotta come up where you feel like it's a V happening down there, that's no good. Should be that nice long snap right out there like skipping a rock. Okay, that's giving you a clue something's wrong and I think what's wrong is you're overextending your right arm and forcing it and, and hyperextending it really at the, at the moment of impact. All right, well that's it for the search for today. Just like we say, right is right and we start going to extremes, normally your body's gonna start telling you and I think this is a great example of your body giving you a clue that you're misinterpreting and, and, and not correctly achieving or doing something partly in a swing. The body is natural, when it stays in its natural movements, the way it's designed to move, it should stay efficient and it should stay body friendly. All right, well that's it for the search for today and I'll be talking with you all again soon.